What's going on, the Squadron of Squirrels? How we doing, Squirrel Squad? It's good to see you guys over here on Helix Squirrel. Today we're doing a little Sarah... I'm not sure if it's Millicent or Milliken. I think it's Milliken, but I'm not sure. I do know that I follow this lady on Instagram, and she's quite funny. Um, I am going to... This is called Having a Boyfriend, and uh, it's been a little while since so I've done anything from her. I think I've only done one or two things, actually, total, so... It'll be nice. It'll be something different, right? So here we go. This is Having a Boyfriend. Let's just get right into it. Uh, I've had this one saved and watched later for a while. I figured today was the day to dig it out. If it's your first time here, subscribe. Hit the like button, notification bell, you know. Um, I'm so grateful for you all to come tonight. Thank you very much for coming. I'm going to leave you on a story. Um, me and my fella don't really get nights off together very often. So when we do, we try to make the most of it. And uh, went out, on, we call them like a date night, went out on a date night recently, had a curry, lovely curry, got in, put a DVD on, everything going really well. Half of the film started to get a little bit amorous, a little bit frisky, which I suppose is one of the points of the date night. Seemingly, we'd forgotten that two hours before that, we'd had a curry. <laughs> <laughs> Nevertheless, he went downstairs. Uh, <laughs> don't mean for a glass of water. <laughs> I told you I live in a flat, fucking work it out. <laughs> the only reason you go downstairs is to do the bins. <laughs> I told you I live in a fucking flat, work it out. <laughs> and that should never be a euphemism for that. <laughs> she fancy, uh, she fancy doing the bins later on. <laughs> it doesn't work, does it? No. So he went, no oh, hairs. Uh, do you know why I do it like that as well, like in that little stupid voice? No oh, hairs. That's not how I ask him for it, by the way. No oh, hairs, no more no hairs later on. <laughs> Will it do the bins? Do the bins. So he was, no oh, hairs. And there's no nice way of saying this to you lovely people, but I could feel a fart brewing. <laughs> Nobody knows what to do, do they? There's no plan of action for this. So what I did, and I don't really know why I did this. What a rip. Certainly don't know why I'm telling you lot. <laughs> Similar to in the film Rain Man, I started going, uh-oh. <laughs> uh-oh. <laughs> uh-oh. <laughs> and he carried on. Because as he told me afterwards, he thought I was doing an impression of Beyonce. <laughs> <laughs> You go from Rain Man to Beyonce. That's a great transition. There's, there's, there's a dick drawn on the thing behind her, by the way. You've clearly not got the hang of the whole seduction thing. I think that's fairly evident from what I've told you so far, isn't it? But I walked in on him the other day, and he was lying on the bed just in his pants, because you know how men think that's attractive. <laughs> <laughs> and he had one bollock hanging out. <laughs> and I thought I'm going to have to pull him on it. Uh, no. Uh, Question him on it, not pull him on it. <laughs> if only they made that noise. If they made that noise, I'd never leave the little buggers alone. <laughs> That's a good horn noise. I said, do you know that you've got a bollock hanging out? He said, yes, I do. I put it out especially for you. <laughs> <laughs> Watching the ladies in the car laugh about this is the best. That's the best. <laughs> oh. Like I said, I've been with my... Oh, it's multiple pieces. Okay, sure. ...fella for six years. It's gone really well. Um, he bought himself a suit recently. I don't think I've ever seen him in a suit. I quite fancied him in his suit. And I told him, I said, quite fancy you in your suit. And he said, and I quote, it's very smooth. He said, if you like, I'll leave it on and sort you out all good and proper, all posh and that. <laughs> <laughs> I said you forgot to say Miss Money Penny on the end. <laughs> but the only time we ever argue is when it comes to Christmas, birthdays, present given times, that sort of thing. Because he really likes to buy me surprises, and I really hate surprises. <laughs> We've got a bit of a happy medium now, though. The last couple of years, where I give him a list of pre-approved surprises. <laughs> Five or six things. He can pick whichever one he likes. I don't know which one it's going to be, so it's still technically a surprise. 
He came home a few days before my birthday last year and he said, never guess what I've just done. I said, what have you just done? He said, I've gone off list. <laughs> he said, I'm not even sure if you're going to like it. I said, why the fuck did you buy it then? <laughs> I mean, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> But a friend of mine who doesn't really know us very well, she said, oh, that sounds like an engagement ring to me. I said, no, it sounds like kaplunk. <laughs> but we have quite busy lives, as I'm sure a lot of you guys do too. And when we go on holiday, we like to go somewhere relaxing, somewhere where we can look at nice scenery and, and read books. That's all we really want to do. Uh, my boyfriend doesn't like to fly, so we tend to stay within the UK. And because we don't have to pay for expensive flights, we sometimes treat ourselves to a slightly posher hotel. And the last posh hotel we stayed in had two baths either side of each other. And I thought, oh, we're going to be able to have really romantic baths together without having to stare at hairy toes. <laughs> <laughs> that man puts up with an awful lot with me. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, his feet aren't any better. They're not horrific, they're just, you know, feet. Nails are a bit long, toes are a bit hairy. There's crusty bits on the bottoms, you know, this sort of thing. <laughs> so you look like you could pick up mice with those. They've got a <laughs> certain sort of owl-like quality to them. <laughs> but, you know, we don't live together. We have a few days a week together and a few days a week apart. And when we're apart and I get to sleep in my own bed on my own, I fucking love it. <laughs> Starfish! I love it. So we all have our partners, but when you're trying to get to sleep, they all do niggly things, don't they? Like, breathing. <laughs> 30 years together, is there anything about each other when you're trying to get to sleep that's irritating? He snores, does he snore? Gives a chill to the people who think that they're a snorer? Yeah. Well, the people who know they're sitting beside a snorer. Yeah. <laughs> There's a bit of denial in the room tonight. <laughs> my boyfriend snores. And I found out recently that my dad also snores because I was whinging to my mum about my boyfriend snoring. And she said, have you tried these? And then slid something across the kitchen bench like it was drugs. Try these. <laughs> and what they were were those nasal strips. I don't know if you've seen them. They're little strips that go across the bridge of the snorer's nose so that they open the nostrils out so that they can breathe more clearly. And in theory, they don't snore anymore. Now, they worked for us for a while until it came to Christmas. Now, something you need to know about me is that I really love Brussels sprouts. <laughs> open up them airways on that poor guy. You, you open that poor guy's airways up and then you eat Brussels sprouts. I love Brussels sprouts. I love them. I love Brussels sprouts. Breathe right strips, that's what they're called. They're pretty cool. <laughs> My boyfriend doesn't like Brussels sprouts. So at Christmas, we get a big bag of Brussels sprouts and I eat the lot. And I don't mind telling you, I'm pretty fucking toxic. <laughs> So just before we went to bed on Christmas night, my boyfriend went, do you mind if I don't put the strip on tonight? <laughs> <laughs> I don't want my nostrils to be any bigger than they have to be. <laughs> Another thing he does, he puts his arm across us, and I feel, I quite like that, because I feel quite sort of safe and protected, I suppose. But then sometimes he puts his leg across and I think, oh, now we are taking the fucking piss. <laughs> the last time I did it, he put his foot, remember, I described it not that long ago. He put his foot on my leg and he rubbed it up and down. And I went, what are you doing? And he went, I'm being tender. I said, no, love, you're exfoliating. <laughs> <laughs> but when I lived alone, I really liked it. I really liked living alone. But one of the things I love about living with somebody else again is I like the unpredictability of it. I like that every now and again, a sentence will come out that I would never have said. The most recent one, out of nowhere, he just went, Your shed's no good to have a wank in. <laughs> Say so what? <laughs> and I said, that's because it's a greenhouse, love. <laughs> but I told you I live
live on my own. My boyfriend also lives on his own. I think some people think that's quite odd that we've been together a few years and we don't live together. But we sort of feel like we've got the best of both worlds because we have a few days a week together and a few days a week apart, and it's sort of ideal. There was a time that he moved in with me for three months because he was between flats and it made sense. And I was fine with it because there was an end date. I'm a bit stuck in my ways. I love you, but bye. <laughs> and while he was at mine for those three months, I worked away for a week, and when I came back, uh, some things had changed in my flat. <laughs> and I said, uh, love, um, uh, one of the towels smells of bums. <laughs> <laughs> you got any idea what that might be? <laughs> Without even thinking, he just went, that'll be my bum towel. <laughs> huh? So when he did eventually move out as a housewarming present, I brought him a small brown hand towel. <laughs> it's good because it's brown, he doesn't have to wash it and just crack it and use it again. <laughs> oh. But his mum came out of his flat, his mum's lovely, she came out of his flat and she said, uh, got you a new duvet set. He said, I don't need a new duvet set. She said, you've got one that you just wash and put back on, this way you'll have a change. And he said, that's lovely, thank you very much. So she went to put it on, and it was lovely. It was all patterned, sort of matching. It was really nice. It was a little bit flowery for him. Just a little bit flowery for him. And he went in to have a look, and he didn't want to hurt her feelings. He came back out, and he went, she's made me bed gay. <laughs> I said, no, love, just because it hasn't got spunk in dinner, and it doesn't make it gay. <laughs> clean, that's the word you're looking for. It's clean. And his mum had overheard, and she came in and she said, it's not a gay bed. If it was a gay bed, there'd be shackles. <laughs> My DVDs, is she been fucking watching? Yeah, right. <laughs> but he is a lovely man, he's lovely. We were in bed the other day, and he got quite animated. And, uh, and he shouted out, feel how hard that is. And I thought, you bugger, it's Tuesday, we didn't have this booked in. <laughs> Turns out he's talking about the skin on his feet. <laughs> taking him to one of those places. You know those places that are popping up all over the place where uh, it's got a tank with the fish in and you put your feet in and the fish nibble at the hard skin. You know those places. And I thought about taking him to one of those and I thought, I can't do that. The poor little fish, they'll think he's got fucking shoes on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to take him to a blacksmith instead. <laughs> oh, gosh. But he's lovely. He's the nicest person I've ever met. He's a genuinely good man. And in January this year, I said to him, you know what, I think it's about time we started talking about the future. And that's what I expected from him, like an awkward silence. <laughs> Maybe some footsteps as he walked the fuck out of me life. <laughs> but he didn't, he just smiled, just really like a beam and grin. And I was, I was really touched and I thought, oh my God, he wants to spend his future with me. Yay. And he said, are you sure you're all right talking about the future? And he went, what, like flying cars and that? <laughs> Oh, my. Oh, hold on. I want to hear her name. Milliken here. Milliken. Okay, now I know. See, now I know. It's Sarah Milliken. See? Right from Sarah's mouth. Um, I think the I think that what makes Sarah so special to me is that um, I think she's absolutely adorable. It's and it, like in a pa it's a package of adorableness. Like she's an adorable woman. She's got a, a, a she's got this cute little kind of higher pitched voice with a with, with a lovely accent. Uh, it, she's just it. She, I find her to be totally adorable all the way around, wrapped into this lovely little disgusting package. And that's the best part about her is that she comes across as being so nice and quaint and adorable, and then <laughs> she talks about bum towels. <laughs> Oh, goodness gracious. Well, Sarah, thank you for that. Hopefully, we'll share this with the Squirrel Squad. We'll see. Uh, that was, I laughed so well during that. Oh, I needed a good laugh. I've needed a good laugh for a couple weeks, I'll tell you. Um, that was awesome. Man, my, I can feel it in my hair. I can feel, like, the top of my cheekbones, the top of my cheek muscles. Um, I can just, I can feel, like, the... Um, like the stiffness, because I was laughing, I don't even know, I don't know what the hell I'm talking about, you don't know what the hell I'm talking about, if I don't know what I'm talking about, how do you know what you're talking about, well, I guess you kind of might know what you're talking about, when I'm, well, I gotta go, Sarah Milliken, good times, having a boyfriend, I liked it, I don't know, what do you guys think, what do you guys think of Sarah Milliken, huh, it's not bad, 
I'll catch you guys soon. Be good to each other, right? Be good to yourselves. Be good to a stranger. Take care of yourselves. Scroll out.